Hey, Fit Like YouTube, welcome back to another episode of Dead Man's Chest. Okay, this episode I'm going to be working on the sump. It's probably going to be a maybe two or three part series because I don't really want the video to be too long, so I'll just do shorter ones. Okay, so the plumbing, I was going to change everything, however, I've decided to just use what I've got, save a little bit of money. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do is change the section with the ball valve. So what I've done is, I've cut off this bit, this is the bit that connects to the ball valve, so I've cut this piece off, um, and then I've also, I've cut the elbow, I'm going to get a new elbow piece, uh, the wife's probably going to kill me because I've used her bread knife <laughs> to cut it, <laughs> but shh, then I tell her. So I've just ordered a new piece here, so I've got a new coupler and I've got a new elbow and these are just going to be dry fitted I'm not going to put cement them so that I can actually pull them apart um, when I'm changing my filter socks okay back under the fish tank um, I fitted some basic LEDs just to give me a wee bit of light in here but here's a quick look at the sump I'm actually going to be using the two blocks of Marine Pure that I had on the Black Pearl. Now, one of these blocks alone was more than enough to to run the Black Pearl, so I actually had two of them. But uh, I'm just going to use the two of them in here, and I'll change this layout. But I'll uh, we'll get back to that a wee bit later on. But yeah, this middle section that's nearly bit of fusion, I'm going to use that for the Marine Pure. Um, and here's where I'm going to change the plumbing slightly. Um, I've added, I had these two power strips lying about, so I've stuck them up there. So that'll just uh, be more than enough. I'm, I don't really want to be using too many plugs in the system. I'm going to try and keep it as energy efficient as possible. So, right, I'll try and get this plumbing stuck on here. Oh, yeah. See if I can do it with one hand. Bear with me. <laughs> Come on, you bugger. I'm just trying to screw that. There we go. That's good enough, I suppose. That's it. Let's sort of pan it a wee bit. Right, so all I've done really is instead of having it dropping in at the middle of this section here, I want it to go in the, in the end there and then I'll be able to build a filter sock holder there. The other one, it doesn't matter because there's not going to be any water going doing that, it's just for emergency, so I'm not going to hear a filter sock in that, just hear the one sock. Okay, okay, so I've cut this piece of glass, um, just an old bit of glass I had lying about, so I've just cut this roughly to size. Um, and all I've got to do now is drill a hole. And the idea is I'm going to have it in that corner, a bit, a bit, I don't know, maybe about three inches down, um, just so in case that if I do forget to clean the sock or I'm at work or whatever, if it does overflow, it's not going to be pouring all over the place. But, yep, okay, we'll go get this drilled. Right, I've just got a bit of polystyrene. I've dropped a hole through it as a template, taped it up onto the bit of glass, um, and now it's just a case of getting it drilled. And here's the boss coming to check everything's so up to par. All safety regulations are in place. <laughs> Risk assessment's done. Yep, we're good to go. <laughs> Thanks for that, Diesel.
Okay, just about there. There we go. Okay, so that's the hole in the glass done. And it looks pretty good. Um, could have made it a bit neater if I took a bit, took my time a bit more, but because it's going in the sump, um, I'm not really that worried about it. Okay, so just took the sandpaper um, and I'm just going to give all the, the, the rough edges a good sand down. Make it all nice and smooth so that when I'm putting the filter sock in and out I'm now going to cut my fingers on it. Here we go. So that's it all nice and smooth now. Um, I can grip it and there's no danger of getting cut at all. So really pleased with that. So hopefully the filter sock fits in. This is a, a wee bit of trick you try to do this with one hand, but hang on, I'll, <laughs> I'll see if I can manage. Come here, you wee bummer. Here we go. Alright, so maybe I can flip it around. Here we go. So, that fits fine. It's a bit of a dirty sock like, but <laughs> it uh, gives you the idea. So, I'm just going to silicone this into place. Right, so, just going to get this siliconed and put into place just now. Um, a lot of people don't like filter socks, but I really do like them. Um, I think... As long as you change them out again, every two or three days, change them quite regularly, um, it's not a problem and I think they're very beneficial and I really enjoy using them. It helps keep a lot of the detritus out of your sump. So that's why I want to get this into here. I could have run it without but um, I've just got that used to having filter socks plus I've got a heap of them in the shed anyway so I may as well make use of them. Well, obviously, I'm going to stick them through the washing machine because, as you've seen in that last one, it's a bit monkey like. But, yep, yeah, just get this edge glued and we'll get it into place. And I'll just leave it for 24 hours to fully cure, and that'll be it. I'll be as strong as anything. And it should do the trick. I'll just put a little bit of pressure on it here and then I'll wipe away the excess. Um, I've also got a cloth underneath and that's just so that when I do remove the box that's underneath it, uh, the, the cloth will be able to just pull away easier and it'll be hopefully a cleaner finish. Okay, so now I'm just going to leave it here uh, till tomorrow and then we'll get it all removed and hopefully that'll be it. Take a debut. Right, so it's the 24 hours later and it's perfect. Absolutely solid. I'm really happy with it. And I've kept it a good bit down, like I say, so that if I do forget about it, um, the water's not going to go anywhere. It's still going to stay in the sump. And I've got my skimmer just to check that it fits in there, and it does, so happy days. So this is pretty much how I'll be running the sump. I'll, I didn't want the refusium to be next to the skimmer because I hate it, I absolutely hate it when you end up getting coralline algae all over your skimmer. That does my head in. So here's a, a top view. Um, so it is a bit of a snug fit, but this is quite a big skimmer for this system. Um, this is the skimmer that I used on my, my first tank, um, and again, it was running a 100 gallon system, so it's more than adequate for this. I will probably will upgrade it later on, but for just new, it'll do the job. Right, 
Okay, so section one was like the skimmer, then it goes in, in my marine pure section. So the third section, I'm going to make this the refugium. The last section will be the return, and I'll have a separate auto top off um, container or tank, whatever. Uh, so just using a sharp razor blade just to get this baffle out. Excuse my bald head. <laughs> God, I need a haircut. Look at that grey hairs, man. I'm looking old. <laughs> I'm not even that old. I'm 40. All right, okay, maybe I am old. <laughs> okay, so this thin razor blade makes this job very easy. Um, it's flexible as well, which helps. So just slide it straight down, and we'll get this baffle out. Um, and then I'll get a cut. I'll just go along the bottom a wee bit. If I can get it out. There we go. And just do a few scores along the bottom. And then we should be able to bend it out of here. So this third section is going to be the refugium. Um, I'm going to change the the like that sliding plates that they've got, the blue ones. I'm going to change that for black, and hopefully black out that whole area so that when my light's on, the light's only going to be going into the refugium and near the rest of the sump because I absolutely hate it when my, my sump on the uh, the black pearl get getting coralline algae all over my skimmer and I did my head in. So I don't want that on this system. So we'll just give this a wee bend. It should pop out no problem. Right, we'll just give this a wee another run with the blade for pull it. It's no far away if you're coming out, it's nearly there. This would be a lot harder if you're using like a Stanley knife blade, like a rigid blade. These flexible blades make this job very easy for taking um, baffles out of sumps. Makes life a lot easier. Okay, so we'll give that a wee tug. It should come out. There we go. Job done. Okay, so all I've got to do now is just give all this silicone a quick clean off with the blade, get it all nice and clean, and then I'll get the, new, the next piece put back in. But I'll wrap this video up just now because I don't want it to run over 15 minutes. I think listening to me for 15 minutes is uh, punishment enough for you guys. <laughs> so, yep, that's it for this episode. Until the next time, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.